Goedemorgen. Want wij beginnen gewoon even in het Nederlands. Graag. Want je bent in Amsterdam geboren. Precies. Daarna ben je de wereld over gaan zwerven samen met je ouders, ook muzikanten. Mm -hmm. Twee violisten. Juist. Vertel even, je hebt dit orkest samengesteld, dit mm -hmm. ensemble. Mm -hmm. Maar het bestaat ook uit allemaal jonge mensen uit landen waar jij een connectie mee hebt. Juist. Het zijn leerlingen van mij. Mm -hmm. um, het eerste meisje studeert bij mij in Genève, in Zwitserland. Waar ik al sinds meer dan 15 jaar op en af woon. Het tweede meisje is ook een leerling van mij, studeert in Bern. Maar zij zelf is uit Italië, waar ik ook ongeveer een jaar lang heb gewoond. Um, de derde violiste is uit Hongarije, waarvan mijn moeder vandaar komt. Ik ben half Hongaars. Um, de altviolist is een leerling van de school van mijn ouders. En zijn broer is cellist in hetzelfde ensemble, we komen beide uit Dublin. Waar ik eigenlijk ben opgegroeid tussen de, mijn tiende en mijn achttiende. En de bassist is vanuit Nederland, net zoals ik. You told me that playing with them is like feeling coming home. Yeah. What do you mean by that? First of all, I was able and am able to work with this ensemble very intensively um, in a way that is not possible with um, a fully professional ensemble. So these are all professional students. Um, some of them are on their postdoc already. Um, they're really mature in that way. Um, but the cellist, however, is 17 years old and is flying back to Ireland very soon to do his uh, final exams in school. Um, but all of them, I think, have a certain signature of style of playing that I have given them over the years. Um, all of them are incredibly energetic and, and they can just work and work for hours with in, intense um, uh, joy at what we're doing. And then there's, of course, the signature of my parents, um, these two Irish brothers. Um, Hungarian music, for example, is actually culturally quite far away from Ireland. It's a totally different language, it has a different syntax, mm -hmm. completely different culture, and yet both of them feel the rhythm of this country and of this music intensively well. Um, and in the Bartok, which we play as well, um, as one of the pieces on the CD, Bartok uses or, or leans very strongly on the Hungarian language. And my mother, who is forever a foreigner somehow, speaks many languages, but with this Hungarian accent, where there's always this extreme emphasis on, on certain syllables. And they have that. They've been taught by them since they're both very young children. And they just have that feeling. So as soon as I start to play with them, it feels like coming home. They, <laughs> they know me. I know them. Oh, mm -hmm. We can rock and roll. And you told me, if it was possible, I would send them all to Hammond Crabbers. Yeah. The violinist, maybe also the cellist and the bassist, I don't know. Sure. But yeah. Because you studied a long time with him, eh? he's very special in your yeah. education, so to speak. Yeah. He's a, a key figure. <laughs> he, um, I was taught by my parents, and at the age of 12, um, I had the good fortune to become a young student in a Tweelen Conservatorium um, in his class. And I was the only child in his class. And I wanted actually to continue my studies for a long time, but when I became 18, he was starting to retire, and he knew that he wouldn't be able to finish um, third degree studies with me. Um, but he was, the lessons with him were incredibly formative, both from a musical point of view. I still um, hear his sound when I teach certain pieces to my students, or when I play certain pieces with orchestra. And he also taught me a lot about character. And uh, he taught me a lot about... Of people or about having or what? Uh, well, about having character as a musician. Okay. Um, he was somebody who really encouraged me, but in a very healthy psychological way. Mm -hmm. And he was a very, and is, a very honest man. Um, and a very genuine uh, person. We, we have a little footage of him playing Bach, double concerto, with Theo Olof. What do you carry with you the most about his teaching? 
um, there's a certain quality of sound. He gave me a very safe and, and good foundation in my sound. After that, a lot of different ingredients were added on top. <laughs> and what is a safe foundation? A safe foundation. Um, that every note, even in the, in the most pianissimo dynamic, has a core. Mm -hmm. That every note has a life. Um, and that no matter how short the note, each one has a life. So from, from the very beginning, the intention of the note until the very end of it, it's everyone is created with love. You don't just play notes. Even when you're practicing, he taught me, you don't just play notes. You have to be there, you have to be conscious, everything has a meaning. And um, I still carry that with me today. Gwendolyn, you um, are a performer. You have your own festival in Switzerland. You're a teacher. You write books about violin playing, for, among for children. Mm -hmm. um, you produce your own films. What motivates you? Um, I think it's a combination of things. Um, I have a seemingly insatiable hunger for <laughs> music. Okay. Um, I'm very curious by nature. Um, and this sounds strange, but I've always been attracted by danger. So um, everything that appears too challenging or even bordering on, on not realistic, not possible, certainly within the confines of my profession, is, is interesting to me. Um, there's an incredible joy and energy I also get from working with other people. Um, I love chamber music. That's part of the reason why I made a chamber music festival. I love the exchange in music. I love the incredible amount of personalities that you meet, the different cultures that you're steeped in. Um, and I'm never finished. I'm born into a family of musicians, violinists, but I'm a fourth generation musician and before me there were pianists. I tried the piano, which I then didn't play because I can't dance with it. I can't lift it up. Um, but this could perhaps also have been a trumpet or, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, a cello. I love the cello. It's not an obsession for you, the it's instrument. The instrument is not the obsession. <coughs> the music is the obsession. The music is the oh, obsession, exactly. always. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what did you do here for this project, Origin? Origin sort of describes my own very mixed background, mm -hmm. which is sometimes, um, usually, it's a blessing, it's a beautiful thing. And sometimes it's a burden to, to not be belonging to any one place or of one place. So it's, it's a double-edged sword. Origin also is in the title because I took, there was a short list of around 30 works that I play regularly. They're from the Bravura repertoire, but Virtuos repertoire. Pieces that I feel or I know most students who have interest in a solo career will learn. Mm -hmm. And yet 80% of what they've learned they will never play on stage because the sheer amount of players it requires, um, they probably won't have a chance to work with. So I thought, okay, let's arrange everything and whittle it down to the smallest or to the most necessary ensemble. And it will be published, so it will be... Yeah, it's going to be for available everybody to for everybody. Um, it's going to be available, first of all, as an, as an audio and, and partially as a visual experience. And I'm planning on publishing the pieces so that people actually have a chance to play this themselves at a, at a later point. Okay. Is it in that way a personal statement or is there more? Sure, it's a personal statement. I mean, it's every detail on it was thought about. And I wanted to reenact the idea of something that's really whittled down, bared down to its very minimum essence. What happens before all the, the stuff, all the, the things that we see, a lot of what we see is facade and I wanted to go behind the facade, I wanted to go back to the core of the music, I wanted to work with aspiring musicians who are hungry to play, uh, who are not, yeah, mm -hmm. and they are interested in, in also bettering themselves, they are interested in being part of a group together, it was the whole experience, it was really, I tried to do the most holistic thing I could within the confines of a CD. One of my favourite pieces is Anna's Bloch. Thank you. What's the history of this piece with you? The Bloch is a piece that I heard my father play a lot when I was growing up as a child. My father is a very proficient violinist who himself was concertmaster here in, in Holland for 30 years in what is now at Netfo. Um, and he practiced a lot. He was a lot on stage. Um, and um, one of the pieces on this is one of the pieces I simply have in my ears since earliest childhood. 
Um, so I wanted to reenact it. Um, I actually worked on it with him, and we came to the conclusion that where we don't do the same thing, we agree to disagree on how to play it. Um, and it, he was also an influence because my father has always been a purveyor of performing contemporary music. Um, he premiered a lot of works in Holland and abroad, and that he passed on to me. Um, Swiss composer. Huh? He was a Swiss composer mm -hmm. who emigrated to America and who later in his life became famous for um, music with Jewish melodies inside. Very well done with these young people, really. Thank you. Let's listen to Bloch. I invite you to go to stage. I can't say that in Netherlands. Go to the podium and go to with your young strikers. And uh, veel success with all of us. Thank you.